Hi guys, Professor Latimer here, the CC mom who loves science. And today we're going to talk about CC Cycle 3, Week 5, Hands-On Science Experiments. And today we have two experiments we're going to do. We're going to have number 72 in your Van Cleves Sound and Direction. And we're going to have number 77, which is rubbed off. They're both kind of short, um, but I'll start with sound and direction. So the purpose of this one is to test our ability to determine the direction of a sound. So you can ask, okay, have you ever heard something, you know, fall down in another room or um, you hear a sound and you kind of know what direction it came from? And how do we know what direction the sound is coming from? And what is sound? So some good questions to ask. Um, I'm, I kind of get some of my prompts from the Coleum Science Scripts. These are actually in the sandbox e-zine on CC Connected now. They're about halfway through the document. So they've got all these for you too. Um, but what is sound? And sound is just a vibration of the air molecules around us. So our air is not empty space around us. It's made of tiny little molecules. And so when we make a sound like snap, it bumps those molecules next to each other and they move in a way, they move that vibration um, all around. And some of that goes into our ear. And so you can talk about the parts of the ear too. You could do that now or after the experiment. But um, Nicole Liam does have a, a diagram of the ear. So our ear has three parts. We have the outer ear and which kind of collects the sound. God made our, our ears this shape to kind of direct the sound into our ears. Then we have the middle ear, our ear canal, um, with our eardrum here. And it's like if you ever have seen the, the top of a drum, it's got that kind of membrane on top that vibrates when the sound hits it. So those sound vibrations, those molecules, bump into our eardrum and make the eardrum vibrate. And then that vibration, um, transfers to this inner ear with these bones. There's um, and fluid and little hairs. And when those hairs are vibrated, they are connected to nerves that send a signal to our brain that says, hey, there's some sound around us. And depending on the pattern or the intensity of the vibration, our brain our, our nerves send that to the brain and our brain interprets it as you know a loud or soft sound or different types of sound so we learned a little bit about nerves in the previous weeks and so we can kind of incorporate that memory work as well so i had a really cool design for our ears so we're going to have an experiment today on how can we tell where sound is coming from so you're going to have a helper you can have a student help you can even have the students uh, in pairs and try this. So I have them, the helper sit down and close their eyes or you can use the blindfold. And the Van Cleef's guide says to snap. If snapping is, is kind of hard or if you want to have the students do it and maybe they don't know how to snap as well, you could get something else to make a sound. I've seen like you could take two spoons and tap them together. You could get two sticks and tap them together. To make kind of a uniform sound um, but we're going to test so one person will sit down and the other person will maybe about six inches away from their face snap in front snap over their head and snap behind and see with their eyes closed if they could guess where what direction you're snapping and sometimes they'll get it right and sometimes they'll get it wrong uh, because those sound waves that we talked about travel equal distance to our ears. They're kind of receiving that at the same time. Whereas if I snap on one side of my head, those molecules that are vibrating, they reach this ear faster than having to travel all the way around to the other side of my head to reach this ear. So my brain, those nerves interpret it as, oh, there's a sound on the side of my head. But if it's in front or on top or in back, it's kind of equal distance. So sometimes we might guess it right and sometimes we may not. Um, so that's kind of the main point of, of this one and kind of talking about 
how our ears work. We're learning the five senses in the grammar this week and how uh, our nerves receive those signals from the outside world around us and to get those signals to our brain. And so we learn more about our environment around us. So that's this one. And then we'll go to number 77, which is rubbed off. This one doesn't take a lot of materials either. You'll just need a bar of soap and um, a sheet of paper. You could get like colored paper, like dark colored paper or black paper so that um, the flakes show up really well. And then you'll need a coarse sandpaper. And I recommend testing this one before community day because I found that different bars of soap uh, work better and some don't really flake at all. Um, we have found that some some types do work well. They will flake, but other ones just kind of smear onto the the sandpaper because they're so kind of soft, which is good for our skin, but not so good for flaking off. Um, so you could either do this as a tutor demonstration or have you know a piece of soap for all the students to try. Um, it could get a little messy, so you can just kind of remind students to make sure the flakes stay on the paper. Um, but we're going to talk about our skin and our epidermal cells and how they get rubbed off. So again, I have uh, Nicole Liam's science script. You can find that in the sandbox e-magazine. Um, another idea is to bring like an orange and like a, a, a zester in and you can show, you know, we can, the different layers of the peeling of the orange is kind of representative of of the layers of our skin too and we'll talk about that um, so you guys the students okay what do we know about our skin and we learned about the different types of tissue and our skin is um, epithelial and I said okay why does our skin peel have you ever thought about that have they ever you know had a sunburn and your skin peels or get a cut or a scrape and so what happens you know does it just stay there is it permanently damaged or does it heal um, and God made our skin to heal and so why does that happen? Um, another good question I've heard is do we have, when we're born and we have our skin then, is that the skin, same skin that we have when we're older? Um, you know, we're very small when we're born and when we're adults, we're a lot bigger. And how does that happen? Um, so what type of tissue is our skin? It's epithelial. Um, we've noticed that our skin heals. Um, our, our skin other does other things like regulate temperature and water levels. It helps us um, cool off by, by reduce, reducing sweat, releasing sweat, and it protects us from our environment, from the sun, from bacteria, and things like that. So, we're going to test um, our the soap is going to be like our skin, and when we rub it against something like. Our skin rubs against things all day long, like our clothes, or if we brush against something, or we bump against something. And as that happens, we actually lose skin cells. And so as you demonstrate, you'll rub the soap on the sandpaper, and you'll notice the little flakes on the paper. And so what do we observe? Are they all the same size flakes? Um, and why does that happen? So our outer layer of skin is made of dead skin skin cells actually and I found this graphic online and it just shows we have different layers of our skin so the very outer layer has um, dead skin cells and so they just fall off during the day and they rub off and that's not a big deal that we lose skin cells because our skin is always creating new cells and our skin is always kind of regenerating and and we're always getting that skin replaced so that's a really cool thing uh, as our skin heals, Nicoleum has a graphic of, okay, when we get a cut, kind of the process that, or get a cut, the process our skin goes through to, to heal and, you know, how our blood clots and forms a scab and kind of a protective layer as those skin cells get um, rebuilt, recreated. And so we're always getting new skin all the time. Um... So the outer layer of skin is called the epidermis and it's made up of dead skin cells and um, we have other 
layers of our skin. We have the dermis and we have um, some other layers under here too. And so sometimes when our skin heals, we get, we can see where it healed and it looks different from the skin around it and it makes a scar. And that is when um, your skin just regrows back in a different direction from it, what it was originally. So it just looks a little different. Um, but it's pretty amazing how God made us and he knew that, hey, stuff's going to happen. We're going to bump against something. Um, but the skin we have now is not the only skin we're going to have forever. It's constantly growing and becoming new again. So it's just another example of how God made us so awesome and how thoughtful he was in our creation. So those are some ideas for Cycle 3 Week 5 Science. And I will talk to you guys soon.